Hello, my name is John Byrne, and I welcome you to this special presentation of Senior Station. Senior Station is brought to you by the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Senior Station is a program for seniors of all ages and abilities to enjoy movement and storytelling. We start here in our train station and we go all over the world. As I share stories with you, you are welcome to follow along with my movements. Well, here she is. Climb aboard the Cornwall Express. Today we are traveling to the coldest city in the world, where the average daily temperature is 4 degrees Fahrenheit. In this vast region of northern Russia, we will learn how a community of very strong people survive in an isolated valley with no running water. We are heading to the land of Siberia. But first, let's begin with a warm-up. We begin our warm-up by closing our eyes. You can listen to my voice. Go ahead and take a deep inhale in. And slowly exhale. And try it again. Deep inhale. And slowly exhale. Let's raise our shoulders up and drop them down on your own time. Just up and down, loosening up. And same thing with our chin. Let's lower our chin and gently raise our chin. Like we're saying the word yes with our head. And just come back to neutral. We can put our hands on our knees and very small, without forcing it, gently rock our heads side to side. That's right, try it a few more times. And again, we do our shoulder circles, front to back. And keep breathing. And we can reverse that back to front. Let's do five more. Five, four, three, two, one. And opening and closing our hands. We're going to want to keep our circulation and blood flowing today because we are going to the far east region of Siberia and shake out your hands. Let's let our arms drop and slowly bring our hands and arms forward and down. Try it two more times, just reaching forward. And let's stop right here and let's open and close our arms as if we're playing a giant accordion. And let's do two more, one, and two, and let our arms drop. We're feeling pretty strong today, and we're feeling solid in our chair. We let the top of our head just lean our head over, and we curve to one side, and back to a straight position. Gently, let's go to the other side, and straight. Let's try this four more times. One, two, three, and four. And then we just look side to side slowly. And look front. We slowly march in place. And can we go a little bit faster? Almost between a walk and a jog. Let's do this for five more counts. Five, four, 
three, two, and one. And relax. Now let's pretend we're skiing and we're going down a slope, getting our arms moving, pulling ourselves and pushing our poles into the snow. And we bring our arms akimbo and we do a little Russian kick. We might say, hello, привет. Practice, привет, привет. And we might open and close our arms as we do a little kick. Okay, and shake out our hands and shake out one foot and shake out the other foot and our arms rolling around like the wheels of that great Trans-Siberian Railway going across Russia into Asia and slow that down. Let's try the reverse. And slow that down. We bring one arm across and gently, gently stretch. And bring the other arm across. Gently, gently stretch. Great. And again, just loosen everything up. You did it. Next stop, Magadan, Russia. We start our journey here in the harbor town of Magadan, located in far east Siberia. Magadan has a population of 93,000. We are 1,200 miles from the nearest city and we are cradling the frigid sea of Akast. A somber mood still lingers in the air here in Magadan. Between 1932 and 1954, this town served as the administrative center of Russian dictator Joseph Stalin's gulags. As a wealth of minerals were discovered in this far region, Stalin created the gulags or forced labor camps in Siberia. Criminals were sent here to the gulags to mine the area for the USSR's industrial expansion. The prisoners eventually included perceived enemies of the state, intellectuals, political opponents, and Christians. The prisoners were also responsible for building the Kalima Highway, which we'll get to later. Starved and working in below freezing, brutal conditions, over one to two million Russian prisoners died under Stalin's Siberian projects. Much of the history is still surrounded by mystery because not many records were kept. So we can say today's adventure is much less about having fun and enjoying really great food and more about learning history and appreciating the many luxuries we do have. As we arrive in Magadan, we have to set our clocks forward. We are so far east, we are eight time zones ahead of Moscow. Let's go ahead and set our clocks forward. Are you pretending? Follow along. As we exit the train, we have to get warm. Follow along with me. We put our gloves on. We put a scarf on. We put two winter jackets on. That's two winter jackets. And zip your jacket up. And as a local passes, we say hello. Privet. Privet. We have arrived in November and it has just begun to snow. Feel the snow around. 
Over our shoulder, we look to a lighthouse in the Bay of Najeev. We feel the wind blowing from the cold bay. There is almost always wind here blowing from the waters of the deep sea of Ashkat. There is a shipwreck in the harbor. The ship is nondescript. Perhaps it was a fishing boat. She lays on her side, submerged halfway under the frozen ice and snow. Oh, can we put our hands on our knees and lean to one side? calmly in that Arctic sea and lean to the other side. We take our binoculars and we look out, point. Beyond the shipping wreck, we see fishing boats heading out to sea. The crews will throw their large nets into the ocean and pull them in. They will catch herring, cod, halibut, crabs, and even shrimp. During Stalin's reign, this bay was the arrival point for thousands of prisoners shipped from Western Russia. The prisoners would make their way from the pier here, walk a short distance to the central square, now called the Victory Square. From there, they would be processed and shipped off to the work camps. The town of Magadan and this region of Siberia have a complicated history. The people here have had a very rough go, first surviving the two world wars and then the collapse of their coal industry. Even after the Soviet era, it has been a tough transition into economic stability. This is an area of great poverty, but great wealth and community. The bay begins to freeze and it will stay this way for the next nine months. Let's play the freeze game. I will start to move, and you can follow me. Every time that I stop and freeze, you can freeze with me. Here we go. did it. We walk down the main street of Magadan. It's called Lenin Avenue. We look up and see buildings in the Stalinist Empire style. We arrive at the VM Central Hotel, the largest hotel in Magadan. We will sit in the lobby and have some tea. 95% of Russians drink tea daily. It is even more popular than vodka. Once reserved for the upper class and Russian elites, Russian tea takes its name from the common black tea with lemon and sugar that is widely available and enjoyed by Russians today. Most Russian homes have a metal samovar. It has this shape, in fact. Can you make that shape with me? Or maybe it has this shape, and it has a little spout on the side. Can you find the samovar in this painting from the Russian Museum in St. Petersburg? Well, the tea leaves are boiled in the samovar, and then we open the spout. We place our cup under the samovar and we close the spout. And you can put your tea down. Let's blow on it to make sure it's not too hot. And you can taste the tea. Try it with me. It has a sort of flowery lavender taste, doesn't it? It's a very rich tea. What do you think?
after our tea, we walk just a few steps away to this beautiful, gilded Russian Orthodox Church. This relatively new cathedral sparkles against the gray background of mountain and Russian apartment complexes. The cathedral was built in 1985. It is the Holy Trinity Cathedral. It stands 71 meters high and rests above the original site of a forced labor camp where hundreds and thousands of prisoners died. The church was consecrated in September of 2011. It is one of several churches in the town dedicated to the memory of the millions who died during Stalin's reign. We open the doors and go inside. And, of course, there is a table with candles. Our hands look like candles, right? Follow along and make wavy candle shapes with your hands. From here, we can light a candle in the memory of someone we've lost or as a prayer for someone who's in need. First, think who your candle is for. And take your imaginary match and strike it and light your candle. Directly across from the cathedral, we find the Traveler's Saint Statue. Many locals visit this statue before leaving on a trip out of town. This is good timing for us, as we are now heading north to an even colder village in Siberia. But first, a few jokes. <laughs> Ever since my girlfriend moved to Siberia, things just haven't been the same. Suddenly, she's cold and distant. <laughs> How does one walk through a Siberian forest? Calm and slowly, but bear in mind. <laughs> now we are heading north, deeper into Siberia. We are on our way to Omyakan, the coldest village in the world. There is only one road that can take us there. It will take 15 hours, and we will be pulled by a team of 10 Siberian Huskies. The road is called the Kolyama Highway, but it is also known as the Road of Bones. It was built by prisoners from Stalin's work camps, many of whom met their fate during the building process. It is another haunting reminder of that dark era in history. Let's climb into our sled. Have a seat, take the reins, and on the count of three, the huskies pull us forward. Adi, duva, tri. Whoosh. We're bouncing in the sled, follow along. And we go up, and we go down, over the hills, up and down, and up and down. If you'd like to stand and sit during this part, you may. End up, and down, end up, and down. Uh-oh, the dogs turn right, and we lean to the left. And the dogs turn left, so we lean to the right. And on the count of three, we throw up our hands and we say, Whee! Ready? Adi, duva, tree. Whee! And grab the reins. We're bouncing again. We feel the cold wind on our face. We finally arrive and we pull our reins in. All of the doggies come to us and they give us kisses and we pet them, and we pat them on the head. We can say thank you to them in Russian. Spatsiba. As we step off of the sled, we realize our eyelashes are frozen together. The temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit below and plummeting. We will head into the cottage to warm up, but first, we must chop some wood. 
we find some trees cut into pieces. Follow me and pick up some pieces of pine wood. Now we pick up an axe and we pull it over our shoulder. On the count of three, we split the wood. Adi, duva, tri, whoosh. The wood splits easily because it is so dry and frozen in this permafrost. We gather the wood, hold it in your arms, and we walk through the snow. And we set it into the furnace. We rub our hands together inside. And we do some jumping jacks inside. And we jog in place, waking up our hands and our toes. Now, there is no plumbing in this town because everything stays frozen at least nine months of the year. There are some blocks of ice in the kitchen from a river nearby. We must melt the ice so we can have drinking water and tea water, and water to brush our teeth, and water to take a shower. Hold the pan and shake the ice over the furnace as it melts. That's right, we will have fresh river water. Now the work doesn't end here. We must find our dinner. We're going to the frozen river to catch a fish. Let's strap on our skis. And we begin to ski outside. Can your legs swing back and forth? And your arms are going? We have carried a saw, a net, and a bucket to the frozen river. We take the saw and we cut a round hole into the ice. Practice sawing a round hole. And it's right down in the ice. Then we take our net and we put it down through the hole into the water below. And we need to wait and be patient for our fish to come into our net. We wait. Let's make the hand on the clock going around. The hours pass slowly in this cold weather. Finally, we feel something pull and jiggle on our net. Grab your net. It begins to shake. We pull it out of the water and it is an arctic cisco fish. We drop it onto the ice it immediately freezes, and we take it back to the cottage. What an adventure so far, right? Let's get warm back at the cottage. This is part of living in the world's coldest town, always trying to get food and stay warm and find ways of keeping things running. The frozen and dry fish we caught is now shaved into thin slices. The dish we will eat this evening is called stroganina. It is thinly shaved, dry, and raw fish, sort of like the Russian sashimi. As you can imagine, food options are limited here. Go ahead and try your stroganina. How do you like it? Suddenly, there's a knock at the door. It is a babushka. Babushka means grandmother. It can be your own personal grandmother or a woman of a grandmother's age. The word babushka has two other meanings. It is a headscarf folded into a triangular shape and tied under the chin. It is also the name of Russian nesting dolls, which are usually called matryoshkas. Our babushka sits and tells us about these dolls, which I'm sure you may have seen before. 
This is a matryoshka or a babushka from Russia. How many dolls do you think are inside? One, two, three. Oh, there can't possibly be another one inside this. Wow, four. Five in total. These dolls have become a folk craft tradition in Russia. They symbolize home, motherhood, and prosperity. They are often painted to represent the babushka. The phenomenon of nesting dolls began in Russia in the 19th century, only after Savya Mamontov, a famous Russian merchant, brought the idea to Moscow after visiting Japan. The Japanese carpenters would depict the Japanese seven lucky gods in the form of dolls, which was actually first inspired by the ancient Chinese art form of nesting objects. As we prepare to leave Omyakan and head back to our train, we come across Father Frost. This is Russia's version of Santa Claus. He is the father of winter and brings presents to well-mannered children each New Year's Eve. He invites us to join in on a Russian dance. May I teach you? Okay, let's start with our arms akimbo and follow along. We do kick, cross, kick and down. 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 Now if you have trouble crossing over your knee, you can kick and cross over your ankle. The next part is open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. And then we have heel, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have kick, cross, kick, down, and kick, cross, kick, and down, kick, cross, kick, and down, kick, cross, kick, and down, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, and the heel bent. Nicely done. Should we try it with music? Well, this brings our trip through Siberia to an end. We can see how very different life is in that remote part of the world. Let's all climb aboard the Cornwall Express. Your seat is waiting for you. Again, my name is John Byrne, and it has been a pleasure exploring with you. I invite you to join me in more adventures on my YouTube channel, Senior Station. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. I give special thanks to the Alzheimer's Foundation of America for presenting this special program. We will see you soon. Das Vidania and Spatsiba.